Amen. So, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, the first technical session after uh, the very uh, rich and uh, intellectually very rich and very valuable uh, uh, inaugural uh, of this morning. I think it has uh, set the scene, uh, all the panelists in the inaugural session. Uh, they set the context, they set the scene. And uh, now we are uh, taking care of uh, the nitty gritty of the sectoral issues and uh, the Park India trade uh, so far. And uh, as the summary uh, came from the Honorable uh, Secretary Designated uh, Ministry of Commerce of uh, uh, India, that perhaps the Park India trade uh, that was following a paradigm of uh, NATO, uh, no action talks only. And uh, now uh, we have to move beyond this NATO and we have to uh, talk as well as uh, take uh, uh, actions. So of course uh, the talk, talk and the speakers they are here and then uh, we'll also uh, be discussing uh, the actions. Now uh, what I'm told that uh, of course uh, the time for this uh, session uh, that is limited and I know uh, how hard uh, Nisha, Turab and uh, Salim they have uh, uh, worked uh, to prepare their papers and then we have a galaxy of uh, discussions uh, as well. Uh, what I propose that if we have uh, uh, about 10 to 12 minutes each for the speakers and then we can uh, uh, take uh, uh, the advice from our uh, discussants and uh, commentators about five to uh, seven minutes max so that we have at least uh, 30 minutes uh, for the discussion. So I'll uh, try to uh, strictly follow the time, 90 minutes uh, for this session. Uh, we'll be concluding around uh, uh, quarter past one. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, after we listen from Nisha and Turab, we have a uh, very impartial presenter. So this is what I was uh, telling Salim, who comes from Bangladesh, that we will uh, hear from India, we will hear from Pakistan, and then we will hear from uh, uh, spectator. Uh, what does uh, he... Th spectator. Yeah, distant spectator. Uh, what is his opinion uh, about this whole Pakistan-India relation, who would win, who would lose, uh, and how we can create a win-win situation uh, out of it. So uh, without ado, if I can request uh, Nisha. And may I also propose the speakers that uh, due to the sanctity of time, uh, if uh, you can skip some of the background info and uh, you uh, give more attention uh, to recommendations, policy recommendation and what needs to be done, uh, that would somehow enrich the discussion and that would uh, give a lot of uh, food for thought uh, uh, for the uh, our uh, delegates who can then take uh, question answers. So of course, do present uh, the background info, but. Uh, uh, give more emphasis uh, to your recommendations. So over to you, Nishaj. Thank you, Abid. Uh, well, uh, this is just to show how trade has been increasing over the years and has, has been said all morning that there is a trade imbalance and that shows up uh, in the trade trends. Uh, now, this is a graphical representation of not just uh, uh, how the trade has increased, but also the intermittent happenings, uh, both political and economic. So uh, the red bars are basically telling us uh, about the political events that have happened and how uh, a lot of positive measures have been interspersed in between. So what it's telling us is that now, at least since 2004, uh, regardless of these political events, uh, positive measures have been taken on the trade front. Uh, we don't have uh, the latest year's uh, figures, but or the latest year's, uh, la this month's uh, uh, minister's meeting. If we were to include that, then we would have shown the cross-border firing followed by uh, the talks that, held, that were held last week. Uh, uh, these are the, la uh, the top 10 items that are exported and imported. Um, uh, uh, and we can see that it's a fairly concentrated structure. Uh, but if you see the highlighted, uh, uh, highlighted commodities, these are the ones that were also in the top 10 uh, in 2009-10. And what we can see is that at least for imports, there are uh, newer commodities that have uh, entered into the top 10 imports. Now these are the uh, various gravity model estimates uh, that have been uh, that have shown up in various studies, uh, and we can see that they estimate that the trade potential between India and Pakistan can range between 0.5 times and 27 times of actual trade. 
and these studies have been done since 2004 and at various points in time. Uh, we've also undertaken uh, a rather simple exercise, but uh, it's very intuitive and it gives you uh, results that are easily easy to comprehend and it also tells us uh, at the commodity level uh, what's going on. So what we've done is that we've estimated uh, uh, the trade potential as the maximum possible trade that the two countries can have if they source from each other all items which they source from the rest of the world. And then we've only included those items out of these which are, which are most likely to be traded. And these are those where the supplier country is globally competitive. And we defined it, uh, these items as being globally competitive if their uh, revealed comparative advantage is greater than one. So what this shows us is that total trade potential is about 11 billion. Uh, export potential is a little more than double of import potential if we look at commodities excluding mineral fuels. But if we include uh, mineral fuels, then the story is a little different because the export potential from India is far more uh, than the import potential um, that there is in mineral fuels. And that's why we split the two just to get a sense of how the two categories differ. And the total trade is actually then about 21 billion. But then we can't not talk about informal trade if you're talking about formal trade. And in a, in a recently uh, conducted study by SDPI, we have uh, informal trade ex, uh, exports to be estimated at uh, US dollar 1.8 billion for 12-13, which is when this, uh, this survey was conducted. And what we find is that it is largely textiles, which accounts for about 76% of the total informal trade. Other items that uh, were found to be traded in large quantities are auto parts and tires. Interestingly, this is something that has happened only in the last one year, when uh, apparently what the respondents have said is that uh, uh, importing uh, from India is actually, uh, they've not been very happy with the imports from China, and that's why they've been importing informally from India. There is also a lot of jewelry export uh, from India informally, pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. Now, uh, over the last few years, a lot of talk has been going on on impediments to India-Pakistan trade. And it's been well documented by several uh, people now uh, on what these impediments are. So we thought maybe it would be a good idea to undertake a survey in both countries and try and uh, gauge the extent of impediment uh, uh, that is uh, perceived by both sides during this trade normalization process. And so the focus of this exercise was to determine the extent of impediments with respect to various indicators, which includes awareness of trade policies, product standards, market access, business facilitation, customs and documentation, and infrastructure. And the focus was also to determine the expectation on the extent of improvement in the next year. So what we asked the respondent, uh, respondents was, uh, what do you expect uh, in the next year, change, no change, more or less. So, and all these uh, respon responses were uh, measured on a Likert scale of one to five. Uh, the focus was also to determine the expectation on demand of commodities to be traded. So we asked the asked the businessmen that what do they think is going to be in demand in the next one year or so. And uh, we also then suggest policy measures to expand trade. Uh, what we've done is, uh, based on these uh, responses, which were all quantified in terms of rankings, uh, we then tested for uh, significant differences between categories in a country or between countries for a particular indicator, and we used the chi-square test to do that. In some cases, we've just represented uh, in terms of uh, bar, gra bar graphs. So we uh, covered 200 firms in India and 200 firms in Pakistan. And this, the respondents included exporters, manufacturers, importers, freight forwarders, and clearing agents. If you look at the cities that were covered, we've, uh, in India, firms were surveyed in Delhi, Amritsar, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Hyderabad, and Ahmedabad. And in Pakistan, firms were surveyed in Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, Rawalpindi, uh, Sialkot, Faisalabad, Multan, and Peshawar. And the sectors that were covered included agriculture, chemicals, textiles, pharmaceuticals, machinery, surgical uh, items, cement, and gypsum. Now, uh, so the first um, parameter that we looked at was um, awareness. And for awareness, we looked at various sub-indicators. There were basically nine sub-indicators. 
Um, as you can see, uh, uh, the last two are basically the broad indicators. Uh, where we are talking about two major policies, which is that Pakistan is moving towards uh, granting MFN status to India, and that Pakistan allows import of all items except for the 209 items that remain. And we found that on these broad policies, awareness is fairly high in both countries. But if we look at all the other policies which are, which are more specific in nature and which actually describe the nitty gritties of trade, there the uh, awareness is uh, much, uh, much lower. And uh, when we test it for uh, significant differences, uh, we find that if we club all these indicators together, then the awareness is actually significantly higher in India uh, than in Pakistan. Uh, now, of particular interest is basically two or three uh, of these policies, which are related to the fact that, Pak that India, uh, there is very low awareness on the fact that India permits the import of all items from Pakistan. Now, this has important implications for market access, because if, if this information is not available uh, with the businessmen, then it uh, obviously uh, impedes market access into India. On product standards, I mean, uh, much has been said about non-tariff barriers, and we looked at both SPS and TBT uh, standards, and what we found was that Pakistani exporters, uh, exporters trading in agricultural commodities find it significantly harder to comply with SPS uh, standard requirements compared to Indian exporters. But no significant differences were found on TBT standards, uh, which are basically for manufactured commodities. And on future expectations, there, uh, there is no expectation uh, regarding SPS or TBT standards. <clears throat> on market access, we found that Indian importers have a perception of higher market access than Pakistani exporters. So uh, clearly, Pakistani exporters don't feel that uh, they, uh, they could access the Indian market, whereas the Indian importers feel that Pakistani exporters can access their market. And Pakistani importers have a perception of significantly higher market access than Indian exporters. Then we also wanted to see the impact of made in India and made in Pakistan labels on market access. And what we found was that a large proportion perceived low impact on market access in Pakistan and India. We also wanted to see the impact of negative political events on trade. And what we found was that a large proportion of Pakistani traders felt political events do not impact India-Pakistan bilateral trade. But in India, the response was mixed. Uh, though they felt that uh, uh, any negative impact was momentary and not permanent. On business facilitation, we looked at uh, ease of obtaining Indian and Pakistani visa, and what we found was that majority of traders find it difficult to obtain visas, but Indian traders find the process significantly easier compared to Pakistani traders. It's a no-brainer, but now we can say that there are numbers to back this. In Pakistan, the process of getting visas is perceived to be easier for large firms and for those trading with India for longer, that is more than six years. We also looked at uh, efficiency of logistic operators and we looked at large and small operators and we found that large logistic operators pers are perceived to be better than small operators in Pakistan, but no significant difference was found between large and small operators in India. Uh, a, a large proportion of respondents in both countries felt that in future, large log logistic operators would be more efficient than small operators. And I think this stems from the fact that, at least on the land route, it is expected that there would be a large expansion of trade. And maybe the small operators who are actually handling trade right now may not be equipped enough to handle these large volumes because they need more information, more, more commodities will be traded, the logistics will be different, the, the uh, concerns will be different, and therefore they feel that large uh, uh, large logistic firms might be able to play a lead role and the small ones could follow suit. Um, on customs and documentation, uh, Indian exporters and importers perceive over, uh, overall efficiency at customs to be worst at the rail route compared to other uh, modes. Uh, on processing time of documents by customs, we found that processing time is higher at uh, sea ports for Indian exporters and importers and at road port for Pakistani exporters and importers. Uh, processing time is expected to reduce uh, at all modes in the future. Uh, we also looked at, ex we also asked the respondents whether they felt that uh, that uh, the checks at the border were excessive, the security checks were excessive, and what uh, surprisingly what we found was that the respondents felt that the checking was highest at C mode, and this was uh, as perceived by the Indian importers, but it was not so. 
uh, it was average for all mo all modes among Pakistani importers. And in on the Indian side, I think the reason why they felt that the uh, checks were excessive at the sea route was that they compared it to uh, imports from other countries, and they felt that those were not subjected to uh, excessive uh, or or even checks, because even though it was far more automated at the sea route. Uh, and time taken wasn't so uh, much. They felt that it was only the Pakistani consignments where every consignment was checked, but that was not applicable to uh, consignments from other uh, countries in the world. And um, But when these consignments are coming through the land route, they know that, the, that these are only coming from Pakistan. So perhaps they've taken it in their stride and they don't question it, but when we tested it, it found, we found that it was higher at the highest at the sea mode. Uh, infrastructure at ports, which was yet, uh, yet another indicator. Now, uh, when we looked at the overall infrastructure, we found that airport infrastructure was perceived to be the best, and seaport was perceived to be the worst uh, compared to all other modes by Indian and Pakistani traders. This again was surprising because this also tells us that um, uh, that traders do feel that seaports there's a lot of congestion at seaports. Um, uh, when we looked at congestion at the port gate, we found that it was significantly higher at the road and sea ports for Indian exporters, it, and it was significantly higher at road port for the Pakistani exporters, but it was also expected that uh, congestion uh, would reduce in the coming year. Uh, when we asked about availability of uh, warehousing or uh, holding areas, we found that it was significantly lower at the road port for Indian traders and it was lower at road and rail port for majority of the Pakistani traders, uh, but it, there was, it was expected to improve at all modes in the coming year. Uh, on availability of uh, wagons, we found that all Indian exporters expressed the availability of rail wagons for exports to be low, though it is expected to uh, improve in the next year. Uh, when we talked about expected tra trade trends, we found that the highest proportion of uh, uh, highest proportion of respondents in both India and Pakistan feel a bilateral trade will increase by up to 25 percent. And when we asked about the expected demand for commodities to be traded, uh, well, uh, growth of exports from India to Pakistan was to be uh, more than 10 percent for agricultural commodities, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, processed food items and others, and for imports it was expected to increase by more than 20% for dates, uh, dry fruits, gemstones and sugar. We also wanted to know what the expected increase was through different modes and what we found was that at least 25% growth was expected for all modes among Indian traders and Pakistani traders expected trade growth to be more than 51% uh, at sea ports and uh, road ports. Um, uh, now uh, based on these findings, the, these are the policy recommendations that we have. Uh, chambers of Commerce and Government should disseminate policies uh, governing India-Pakistan trade, particularly those related to raid, uh, road and rail transport. Um, and a dedicated web portal designed exclusively for India-Pakistan trade would be useful for tracking the latest developments on trade policy. And this